Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 And today I'm going to be giving you Part 5 of What If Naruto Was The Forces of Nature Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform And also guys Go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Master All The Uzumaki Skills and techniques over on Anime King 2. And if you're new, yes, I did have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, and Making 3, which I post what if on every single day. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all for helping your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah. Without further ado, what do you say we just leap on into this new episode start? The intro, guys. So the last time we left off, Uncle Midorashi met up with some of her friends. Asuma noticed that she was with someone before they had parted as it was none other than the Uzumaki kid. As they start to talk about him. They start to talk about Takashi and his whole team in total. They have really excelled in the past. Couple of weeks had gone by. It turns out that they only took one full week of the admission and then since then it has been only C ranks. The team was too advanced regarding their teamwork that they did not need to spend hours or months or days going over simple d rank chores and not to mention it was below their skills, greatly so. Uncle being friends with Naruto and Sasuke had a rough estimate of what they were capable of but she was not fully aware. However, Kurnai was curious about Naruto's bloodline as she heard that he was able to do some amazing things. And not to mention, despite Sasuke being a Uchi and Naruto was said to be stronger than him. And Sasuke already awakened in Sharingan with three totem in each eyes. So that was quite the accomplishment. The girl was no slouch either. She was a prominent Kunuichi who was going to make a fast shot in her career. As she was already showing that she was an excellent weapon smith when it comes to what Shuriken and Kona is throwing. And not to mention her tight dudes and her speed were not that bad. As Anko had met all of them. As Team 7 for that fact was currently making their way towards the land of Wave. As they were currently embarking on another C rank mission. They were supposed to deliver Tazuna towards the land of Wave. Upon making their way there, they ran into the Demon Brothers. However, the Demon Brothers stood little to no chance as they were quickly taken care of. As Gato was the main reason behind this ambush. It was then that Tazuna told him everything. Kakashi didn't have a problem with his team taking this mission, despite the difficult increasing. He just wondered what was their opinions, as he wanted to know what they thought about it. And the group agreed to go along with him. However, while that was going on, Gato was talking to one of his favorite subordinates. The man's name was Arashi. He was a member of Kumo X, missing name now. As he had fled the country after doing some rather horrendous things. As Gato had him on a payroll and the man worked directly for him. The man wanted to be the one to go and kill the Kanoha ninjas however. Gato wanted Zabuza to do it and if he failed well, he would just kill Zabuza and use his head for the bounty that he had on it. And he was saying, Arashi to do it. However while that was going on a team was coming from Kumo. As it was their mission to hunt down Arashi. As they got the location on where he was and who he was working for. The man was known as Gato. As they made their way towards Land of Wave as well. Team 7 encounters Abuza as Naruto had already sent it. As Naruto was a touch sensor once, he was in contact with the plants and the life form around. He made contact and he could sense him on the trees. They got into a tussle. As Kakashi was not worried when he got captured, he would have been worried if his team was normal, however, they were not. Zabuza found himself completely outmatched. 
he had no choice but to flee. The members from the Kumo team, a boy known as Kao, Yujito Samui, and their Jonin Saints in the ruin, came out. The situation between them and Kanuha became quite tense, as Naruto seemed more pissed off than usual. Kakashi did not trust them to backstab them after all. Ever since Kumo went after the Hayuka, well, things have been. tension had been high, so. Kakashi did not trust them one bit, and not to mention, Naruto rising anger was not helping the situation. However, they came to a peaceful talk to just step away from one another, as the both of them didn't need to come to blows. However, Naruto made quite the impressions as Kao was an arrogant person and did not like when people looked down on him. His teammates took his side, as they don't know who the hell these leaf ninja think they were. However, look in Naruto's eyes as the place started to generate wind all around them. It was a look of danger, as he really hated them for some reason. However, they parted as they made their way towards one of the hotels in the wave. They were surprised how glad the people here was to get their money. It was like they haven't had money in a long while. But judging by the economy, they shouldn't be too surprised. And not to mention, if Team 7 mission revolved around Gato, it seems, like their mission was going to revolve around Gato as well. And this wasn't such a good thing after all. The tension was already so high. Kekashi asked Naruto what was his problem regarding the village as he noted it was the same thing for Kiri as well. As Naruto told him that he's a Uzumaki and those three nations destroy his home and his ancestors, Kakashi was shocked as he didn't know that Naruto knew that. He wasn't even sure that Hokage knew that Naruto knew that as he wondered what else did Naruto know. However, the blonde didn't seem like he was about to elaborate. Some time passed as Naruto was meditating as he was sitting calmly. Dori had sent his team out to gather information and to stay away from the Kanoha ninja as well. He was confident in his team's strength. Going up against someone like Akashi was not going to be in their favor at all. And that another ninja from Kanoha, the one with the blonde hair, seemed really to dislike them. So they just stayed their grounds away. However, Yujito found herself in a forest and she came across Naruto. The anger instantly flooded into the blonde. However, on one of the nearby branches, a distance away, something was watching the both of them. It was merely interested in Naruto. It was that same creature that had been sent here. The creature did not show itself as it hid in the bushes. However, it seemed to have a great interest in Naruto. Its father told it to stay here and watch him, as he was a rather important person for them. So yeah guys, so basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place of yourself and yeah, what is it we leap into this new episode guys, don't waste any more time. Let's begin now. It was hard for the first few years of his life. Naruto didn't really have anyone as he was in an orphanage. It wasn't until he went by Ichiwaka Ramen one day when he smelled the ramen and the old man invited him in. And he met the old man's daughter Ayama when she was much younger. And they were so kind to him he was so confused. As all of the other adults were mean to him. Actually, when he went home that day he had cried that his own people were not mean to him. And he had also met the Hokage as well. Another old man who was kind to him. It was strange. His life was turning better. But despite those connections, yet, he had not felt the feather of bond with them. Because he didn't have something that they had, family. Yes, he spoke to them in a day, but whenever he went home, he was so alone. Having no one to talk to, having nothing. And that didn't change until he met Sasuke. And started to really more interact with people around him. And Ion became like a sister to him. Someone that he literally risked his life for any time of the day. Her and her father were two of his precious people that he loved so much. He cared about Harrison, but... Most time the old man is acting a bit cagey around him, not to mention, he's having his ninja spied on him. Well, Naruto suppose that is a given, consider, that he'd eradicate that smug bastard who tried to hurt Ayam. But there was even a shred of guilt that he felt about killing that guy. In Naruto's opinion, he deserved it. He deserved much, much worse for even touching a strand of her here. However, here he was now. When he first learned about the destruction of Uza, that he didn't have a family because three nations got jealous, the rage inside of him was nothing normal. He wanted 
to literally go and burn their nations. But that was just a child mind playing tricks on him after all. He was just a child. He might be stronger than most but he was not that powerful. He would be killed instantly. But as he grew the hate started to grow as well. As he did not let it go as he thought. He just hate them more and more and more. And now, seeing this Kumo Kunuichi. However the fox told him something rather surprising. She was a Jinjulki like him. Now that surprised him a lot. On one hand, he knew that he should have no reason to hate her because while she was from that village, she did not really have an involvement in what happened to his clan but still, she resided in that village that he hates so much. And secondly as well, she was just like him, a Jinjulki, as he wondered if her life was similar to his. However, she was shocked to see him here as well. Yujito came to a pause. As she was shocked, her sensory ability was not the greatest. And while she was friends with a Nibi inside of her, she doubted that she could take on someone as Kakashi Hatake, as she wondered if he was around here somewhere as well. Regarding this Jenin in front of her, he looked strong but she think that she would win if the both of them fought. She watches he slowly rise up to his feet. What are you doing here? He asks. His tone was mixed. On one point, it sounded a bit harsh. On the other, he seemed rather curious as well what she was doing here. But she also noticed that he was ready. He was ready to make a move if he had to. Look, she said. As she decided to make this as plain as possible. I'm not here to fight or get into anything with your team. I don't know why you hate my team so much despite not even knowing us. Yes, I know that we're from separate villages, but I don't know you, and I don't want to know you, she said. So, I'll be on my way. As she turned her back. However, she was startled when he was now standing in front of her. Yujito was frankly confused. As she looked behind her, only for a single second to see no one there. How did he? I asked you a question. What are you doing here? As Naruto was not going to trust her words like that, first of all they spy on him and his team. They did not give a valid reason why they were here. Although he doubt they would tell them if they were on a mission but still Naruto did not care. They were spying on him and his team. What if this was some elaborate plan? What if they were actually working with Gato? And they were here to play the safe zone by moving through the land of wave. Saying that it was a safe land for them because Kanoha did not own it. So they couldn't really do them anything here. And what if this was all a ploy just to watch over them and see what they're capable of and then they come to strike. This was the second time he was running with his group. It almost seemed like they're spying on them and Naruto would not allow harm to come to his team or himself if he had anything to say about it. Yujito on the other hand became cautious as hell. She might have misjudged the situation as he moved so fast. She was not expecting that as she got herself ready just in case there was going to be a fight. As she did not even notice a small grasses at her feet start to creep up her sandals making their way. As she narrowed her gaze, I am not at liberty to tell you that she said. As the grasses wrapped her on her legs softly, they didn't squeeze or anything. It allowed her to get a sense of what she was feeling right now. He could feel it, she was nervous. She was a bit scared of the unknown. However, he could also feel the monstrous power stirring inside of her as well. While it did not compare at all to cram inside of him, it was still a tail beast. Do you really want to do this, she said. Because you should know, if you make the first move, I will not hesitate, she said. As her nails elongated, as she started to push shocker through her body, to rate to enhance herself. As Naruto tilted his head, he could not feel a drive coming from her to try and attack him. She just wanted to get out of here. Perhaps he got the whole thing wrong but still, his dislike of the whole nation clawed his mind from seeing that. And he knew if he did something right now, especially to one of their tail beasts, didn't matter if he was a Jinjuliki as well, they would try and come to war with Kanoha. Wow. There was only a few people within the village that Naruto cared about. The senseless violence. It would not do anyone any good. 
so he dropped his guard as Yujito noticed that as he simply walked right towards her before he walked by her. As the small grass in her feet simply resigned by themselves. As Naruto paused, know this, he said. If you or anyone in your team try to go against me and my team. As he turned towards her, as she looked at those eyes, his eyes had this cold, glassy look in them. And not to mention it seemed like his eyes were containing a surge of electricity. She could swear that they glow as they looked at her. I will murder every single one of you. She tried to keep herself steady however, the underlying threat got to her a bit. But she was not aspiring to become one of the greatest Kunoichis of Kumo for nothing. Make all the threats that you will like. But if you make a move against my team as well, I'm coming for you she said. As they parted and made their way, both of them making their way back towards their respective camps. Well, that was intense. The Nibi said inside of her, That guy is just a big jerk. I guess all Kanuha ninjas are just that. Well, you can't blame all for one bad apple. Well, I don't really care about him. However, if he does get involved in my mission, I will take him down. Well, he has no right to get involved in your mission. After all, you're not here for him. Remember the real target. But don't worry, kitten. If he tries anything, I have your back. Thanks, Nibi, she said. However, the Nibi was thinking to herself. Something was really off about that person. It felt strange. As she just couldn't put her paw on it. Meanwhile, that was going on as Naruto made his way back. He spun around. Once again, he saw it. The thing moving so fast that he couldn't really keep track of it. It was like it just disappeared. As he didn't really know what it was. Something has been watching him for quite some time now. And yet every time he turned he could see it on the edge of his vision but however, it was always able to elude him. But it must be some kind of animal, considering that it was flying, perhaps it was a bird. Hey Kurama, he said. Do you have any idea what this is? Kurama was linked to Naruto's senses since Naruto gave him more mobility so he could feel what Naruto feel. As the fox rested his head on his paws, I felt it as well. Whatever it is, it's definitely not human. It's shocker, it's an animal type. An animal, said Naruto. Why would it be watching me? How should I know, said Kurama. Whatever it is though, it seemed to be rather interested in you. Yeah, it seems that way, said Naruto, as he made his way back towards the house. Sometime later, Sasuke flashed two hand signs as he took in a deep breath. He then proceeded to exhale. Upon doing that, a stream of fire came from his mouth. The stream of fire twisted and warped until it bent into a gigantic dragon head. Said dragon head kept on spiraling until it made contact with a colossal boulder in front of it. The moment it made contact, it exploded. The fire was so overwhelming that it literally started to melt the boulder down, breaking it down until it was completely brittle. When the technique came to a stop, Sasuke made his way over as he picked up a pedal and threw it. It made contact with the boulder as it simply broke away. A smirk came on his face as he dropped to one knee. He spent the last hour out here revising his techniques, not to mention being able to pump more chakra into them to make them more effective than usual. As his Sharingan faded from his eyes, he was exhausted. So far his training was coming along a lot better than he expected. A few years ago he never thought he'd reach this progress so quickly. But it was coming along greater than he thought. And all because he decided to follow root ideas. As he was rather grateful for those. As he now was reaching the power that he needed to get his revenge. He only need a little more time. Meanwhile that was going on. Saya leaned up against a tree as she watched Naruto. His legs were full as his eyes were closed. However above his head was five floating balls of fire. But the flames did not look ordinary. 
because they were switching from red to white and then back to orange. She watched as Chakra start to leave his body. His Chakra was so dense and versatile that whenever he made contact, the fireballs grew in size and their color started to change even more. Their color became a bright white as the flames almost look cold. However, she knew that it was far from cold because she could feel the heat from here. She watches him merge all of them together, creating a sizable fireball above his head. She had the rough estimate about his abilities. So far, what she's noticed is that he can use all of the element natures without even performing hand signs. His body had this rare genetic that allowed him to mold all of the elements without even proceeding to try to control them with hand signs. Something like this has never been seen in the snow world before. There was only a handful of people that knew about this. And once this information became public, well, there would be a lot of eyes on Naruto. And that was not the only thing though. She watches the earth rose up around him as it merged with the fireball. Instead of completely burning away, it merged together. As she watches it twist and wrap around each other until it elongated into a spear. Once it was elongated into a spear, it started to cool down. As it was no black with red markings on it, it seems like it was made out of magma. As Naruto reached up and caught it, he then proceeded to pull his hand back and launch it. His bloodlines did not physically affect him, however, she watched as said spear rapidly tore through several trees before it fizzled out. Damn it, said Naruto as he got to his feet. To her, that was an amazing accomplishment. However, Naruto didn't seem pleased at all. As Naruto frowned to himself, yes, he had control over all the elements. While those were the standard thing, the sub elements were really getting to him. He could merge a few of them together, and thus the fire and earth gave him magma. However, to keep it stable while ejecting that chalk from his body, it usually ended up with it not being able to keep its proper form, judging by the technique fizzling out. He could do it, however, in a long distance attack, it was really sloppy and the person would simply bat it away if they had a sword or pump chalk in their face. That is not what he wanted, he wanted his technique to slice right through the bones and flesh of his enemies and burn out on contact. However he was failing so far, you know, most people would be insanely satisfied with just being able to do half the things that you can do. As Naruto stood there, he didn't turn around. Well, in those people cases, yes. However, I strive for perfection. And failing to do the simplest tasks, which should not be above my abilities. It's really quite irritating if you look at it on my point of view. Well, I guess you're right there after all. Not many people can claim to be able to control all the elements. And merge them together as such. However, you do it so effortlessly. So being unable to do this must really be grinding at you. Her tone was filled with amusement as Naruto turned towards her, his eye twitching. As she get her jollies out of making fun of him and Sasuke whenever she saw the rare opportunity, seeing that they weren't so much. Shouldn't you be training for the upcoming fight? And who says I'm not? She said. He placed that in the tree. So you're a clone, he said. Well, the better way to strengthen my chakra control as he felt the other clones over the area. Fastly depleting and refilling her chakra system as she wanted to expand her coils. On the team she had the smallest amount of chakra reserves. While it was extremely large for her age. And not to mention as a genin. But when it came to her team she was quietly lacking a lot. Because Sasuke chakra pools were larger than hers. While her techniques were able to use less chakra because she refined her techniques down to the smallest pinch. Her father taught her well on that. That wasting chakra will mean the death of a shinobi. So she did not waste much of her chakra however. She would like to last longer in a fight. And up her stamina as well. But regarding the other areas. She was doing fine so far. Well then said Naruto. Let me help you expel it some more. As he raised his hand. Don't you dare she said to him. Try and stop me. 
She had to leap as electricity shot from his fingers. As he kept on blasting it towards her, forcing her to exert herself and move some more. And it was just a clone. Sasuke was making his way back to the house when he had to duck. As three massive stones flew over his head, they almost took him out. What the hell? As he saw Saya rush past him, he then saw a massive earth dragon as Naruto was on top of the head, chasing after her. He shook his head. However, he was not one to pass up such an opportunity. He flashed new hand sign as Naruto turned around. The earth dragon quickly surrounded Naruto as it was hit by a massive fireball, dispelling the technique. Naruto then had to duck as three kunais almost pierced him as he was now surrounded by the two. As both Sasuke and Saya gave each other a nod, so what now? Team Milk and dear old me. As he simply smirked, do your worst. Moments later, Kekashi arrived back with the bridge builder. As Tazuna was confused, something was severely wrong. There was a forest in front of his house. How the hell can I see my house from all the way out here, he said confused. It was then that he noticed a land. The place was torn apart. There was a massive gouge out in the earth and several slashes on several destroyed trees. Tezuna started to panic. Did someone attack, he said. Grandpa, a voice said as he turned. His grandson in here rushed towards him as he hugged his leg. He was rather afraid of something. In here, what's wrong? Did someone get hurt? Kekashi already sensed what was going on, so he simply shook his head. Everyone is fine, Tezuna, he said. In here, why are you so scared? I... I, I, I told them that they wouldn't be able to beat Gato, and, and, and they start to attack me, in here said. They're coming, he said, as he hid behind his grandfather. As he was afraid, Tezuna's eyes went wide when he saw three gigantic strange statues moving towards them, each of them having a strange sword in their hand that was made from earth as well. Naruto, cut it out, said Kakashi. As the first statue chest burst open as Naruto dropped out of it, it was then that Inira felt something touching his leg. As he slowly turned, he saw that a hand was coming out of the ground holding onto his leg. His eyes widened as he screamed, as he promptly passed out. Now look what you did, said Kakashi. Hey, it wasn't me, said Naruto. As Saya burst out of the earth, well that would teach him to know how fearsome shinobis are. What did you do to my poor grandson, said Tazuna. Oh, nothing really, said Sasuke as he walked up. We were just showing him that we could handle Gato and his threat. As Tazuna reached down and picked up the sleeping child, as Kekash simply shook his head. Well, at least they were keeping the people protected, so he didn't have to worry about that. Time skip. It has been one week. Sensei, said Keo. I don't think Arashi is here anymore. I mean... How long have we been here now and there's no sign of him? And this Gato guy? It's not like he's gonna show his face here. I mean, he's a drug lord and all. Why would he show his face in front of the people that he's terrorizing? He's just gonna send his thugs. As someone leaned up against the banister. Well, so that means that he's gonna send Arashi as well. To finish the job. What about the other one that the Kanoa team was fighting? What was his name again? Oh yeah, Zabuza. I mean, won't he be the one to come back? Well, Zabuza had to flee because the Konoha team was too overwhelming for him. So I doubt he will come back by himself as he know that he will just be walking into a dead trap. So we will continue. Kakashi should be moving out very soon. We will follow them to the bridge and stay our distance and wait for the perfect opportunity if Arashi does show himself. And what if he does show up on the bridge, Sensei? We haven't really went over this part yet. What is going to happen with us and the Kanoha team? Well, I'm hoping they will finally understand that. Our business do not revolve around them. And I'm hoping that we both can get through this without any tasseling. But none of you have to worry because I won't. I don't want anything to happen to any of you. I'll be fine, Sensei, say Kale. If those Kanoha bastards, especially that blonde, tries anything, I'll kick his ass, and you will know who to mess with, you know.
They say that the people that talk the most are the weakest, said Samoy. What? Said Kayo. Oh, just a statement, she said. As Yuji took over her mouth, as she sighed for her laughter. Even though it looked like he wanted to laugh as well. Come on, guys, said Kayo. They were always picking on him. So what if he was a bit boisterous? Time skip. Team 7 except for Naruto had moved out as Naruto was given the mission to stay behind and watch over the family while the rest of them made their way towards the bridge. Kakashi was sure that in the first few days that there would be no harm but as the time went down he figured that Sabuza would be showing his face anytime soon so they had to be vigilant and Yuri sat by the pier as he was afraid to go anywhere near to that blonde or his team. As they used the opportunity to scare him, however, it was strange. Upon them scaring him for the entire week, he did not think about the situation that they were in. And it almost felt relieving. But still, they were not nice people. Using these illusion things to go after him. Not to mention the one with the red eyes. He was always turning on those weird red eyes in the dark, making him look like some kind of demon. As Nir glanced over towards his mother, as she was simply whistling to herself, as she tended towards a small garden. Well, 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 look what we have here. In a return, as he saw two men, he got to his feet as he went after his mother. Hey, let my mother go, he yelled. As they turned towards him, in a no, run, said Tsunami, as one of them grabbed her roughly. In a eyes went wide. You bastard, as he rushed forward. As the thug that held on to Tsunami pulled out his blade his other hand. I'll teach his brat some lesson. No, please, don't hurt him, Tsunami beg. But the thug brought his blade down as near ran forward, eyes closed. He was going to protect his mother no matter what. However, running head first into danger was not something good. You know, I should have been teaching you that running into danger and into certain death. It's not something good for you to do. In here, open his eyes. Of course he knew his name because the others called him Bite. N Naruto? As Naruto stood there, his hand was covered in rocks as he held the blade. Inira was confused. How did you... It's alright, said Naruto as he pat him on the head. You're always complaining about us not being able to defeat Gato. And look what you're doing. Going up against his man. Head on without any weapons. If that is not courage, I don't know what is. As Naruto snapped the blade, the bandit was shocked. Naruto reached out as he held on Tsunami's hand before he pulled her along, out of the man's grip because he was too shocked to even. Realize what the hell, the brat just appeared out of nowhere. It's alright Tsunami-chan, said Naruto. I'll handle this. Why don't you take Inari inside? The second bandit brought down his katana to slice Naruto's left arm off. Watch out, she said, however, Naruto simply. Stepped out of the way as the man striped the ground. As Tsunami picked up Inira and rushed into the house as she locked the door behind her. Now, said Naruto, why don't we have a little chat? The two men pulled their fists back as Naruto opened his mouth. A far, 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 far distance away. The two bandits could be seen flying from the heavens. However, they were not really flying. It was like something had blown them so violently that they were soaring through mid-air until BOOM! They crashed hard creating two sizable craters. They were not moving. After being thrown from so far, back towards the house. Huh. Now that was a long shot, said Naruto. As he looked towards the two flying bandits, they'd probably already crashed by now. However, it seemed like Gato was finally making a move. As Naruto made his way towards the side of the lake, he then proceeded to apply chakra to his feet as he leaned down the water and placed his hand in it. The water then started to glow until the front section where Naruto was took a shape of a strange creature. Its glowing yellow eyes could be seen. The head of the creature came up. It was like a shark, however, it had a neck. It did have rows of long, razor sharp teeth. Keep the house safe until I return. As the thing nodded to him. Once again Naruto was blessed with the ability. Of being able to convert and twist the elements as he see fit. And not to mention. The elements also loved him as well. 
as Naruto saw Inira at the door. Is it over? He said as he looked out. Snami trying to pull him back. It's alright now. I've set up precautions just in case any of them come back. You guys will be safe. Are you gonna... Are you gonna fight? Inyere asks. As you remember what happened to Kaizen. Inyere, I promise you this right here and right now. I will keep your grandfather safe. And you and your mother are gonna be protected. He remember Kaizen breaking his promise as well. Please, come back Inyere said. As he didn't want Naruto to die. Just as Kaizen did. As Naruto simply flashed him a grin. Inyere didn't know why but he believed that everything was gonna be alright. Be careful, said Snami. As Naruto jumped off. As he landed on one of the trees, he propelled himself forward as he dashed through the forest. Meanwhile on the bridge, the situation became tense rather easily. As Sasuke found himself trapped in the ice mirror, his sharing gun was not activated. He watches a hunter in appear on said mirror. Sasuke tilted his head as a hunter in appear all around him. To keep my master safe. I will have to take you down. I won't let any of you hurt Zabuza-sama. As Sasuke simply got himself ready, the hunter named launched sent bonds from all angles. Sasuke pulled a scroll from behind him as he slammed his hand down. Poof! A massive smoke enveloped the entire area. When the smoke cleared nothing was there. All the sent bonds had stabbed into the ground. Haku turned his head as he heard something embedded in his ice mirror. As he turned to see that it was a massive Fuma shuriken, Sasuke used to jump up. Haku came out of the ice mirror and tried to grab Sasuke's leg. Once he did though, Sasuke already finished the hand sign. Got you. Fire style. Fireball Jutsu. As he blew flames from his mouth. However, Haku released leg and pulled himself back in the mirror. Sasuke tossed the other Fuma shuriken in his left hand. As he landed right on it. He then proceeded to propel himself upwards. Right toward the ceiling of the mirror. Once he was at the top, Sasuke started to generate chakra to his hands. As he started to mold that chakra into lightning of Inti, the electricity started to course off his hands. Lightning release, he said. Eternal light. As he clapped his hand together, the reflection of all the mirrors, the place went insanely bright. Sasuke landed in the distraction, and he flashed through Hansen and gathered. A large amount of his chakra before he took in a deep breath. Fire style. Widespread destruction. He spew out a glob of flames that start to be empowered by his chakra before. It shocked to all areas. Haku was alarmed that such a Jenny knew a technique as versatile and dangerous as this. This was probably an A-rank technique. Haku had to leap out of the mirrors. The fire attack being so intense at the mirrors was viciously cracked and some of them broke. The ones at the bottom were obliterated. Haku saw his chance he launched sent one towards Sasuke's neck. Sasuke spun and launched a kunai. His Sharingan seen everything. The kunai not the sent one away as Sasuke launched another one. The first one ricocheted after the second one hit as he launched a third one. It hit the mirror as Haku grabbed onto it flipping himself. As he was about to slide into another one, however, the second kunai that Sasuke threw, it turned over as Haku noticed there was an explosive tag. Boom! The attack threw Haku out of the air. As he crashed on the ground in a groan, he held his side in pain as he dropped on it rather hard. He tried to pick himself up only for the Uchiha to flash in front of him. Sasuke raised his leg mid ear. However, Haku blocked. That is when Sasuke simply vanished. As Haku saw the kunai falling, substitution. To substitute that quickly with something so small, that took a lot of hard work and practice. Haku always defined himself to be strong for his age, extremely so. He was told that many times by his master. However, he found himself being outclassed by a mere Jenny Levish Shinobi. However, that information must be false. As Haku turned and saw a massive fireball. Breathing down on him, he quickly created the ice mirror. However, his body was not able to fully escape, as his right arm got badly burned as he dropped on the other side. Haku then proceeded to get to his feet until he remembered the bridge builder as he turned. The bridge builder was all alone. 
now was his chance to end this so him and Zabuzasama could leave. So one of them didn't have to die. But that was his mistake. The bridge builder was not alone. Because of his busted burn arm, he was not able to block the kunai that tore right through the side of his shirt and pushed him backwards. Another one came down as he was pinned to the bridge. Shock at what could be so precise. As his technique has just dropped and someone threw, Shuriken's precise enough to pin his shirt from all the way over. Haku turned as a feet was coming down toward his face. Boom! A brutal kick from Saya that knocked Haku clean out. The clone of Saya went up in a poof. It's alright to move now, the real Saya said as she moved from behind Tazuna. As she pretended like the bridge builder was, stand there by himself, giving the false illusion that they could end the match rather quickly by taking the bridge builder out. So with that, Haku was knocked unconscious. As Sasuke arrived, over to the other side, Zabuza was being knocked back. Kikashi was using a Sharingan in the match, was becoming one-sided. As Zabuza found himself at a huge disadvantage, as Kekasu was really putting in to kill the man. A distance away. Hey, look over there, said Kyo. As the members of his team noticed as well, the small boats rowing in on these dreadful waters. As Darui had a binoculars as he looked through it. He's here. He is, said Kyo. Yeah, Arashi is here. Prepare yourself, he said. As the members nodded. Meanwhile that was going on, Naruto landed on the bridge. As he saw the unconscious tied up missing in. Is it already over? He asks. What took you so long? Said Sasuke. Had to take care of two thugs. So who's left? Well, Zabuza. But Kakashi should be enough to take care of him. Saya said. So I wouldn't be too... Wait, said Naruto. It seems we have company. As both men were in a deadlock as they clash, giant cleaver blade versus kunai, and Kekish was actually pushing him back. Zabuza was cursing as he was losing. Several slashes over his body, and he was losing blood. Well, well, well. What a disappointment. It was then that they came to a stop. Jumping away from another, Gato, what the hell are you doing here? As Zabuza was confused, seeing the man here. Well, I would have said I came to congratulate you on defeating the bridge builder and bringing me his head, however, you have been nothing but a sore disappointment, Zabuza. I mean, what's the point of me paying you all that money if you do nothing but lose? So, what is this? You're betraying me. Going against our contract? Well, I never planned to pay you in the beginning. You bastard. The most thing I hate in this world is a traitor. And I promise you, by the end of this day, my blade will be the last thing you see. Well, 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 that would be the case if I was alone. But I'm not, aren't I, boys? Laughter could be heard as the thugs start to move a head. However, one important step right beside him. Kekashi noticed the man's appearance. I know you, he said. Kekashi, the famous copy ninja. I know of you as well. Arashi, missing in from Kumo. Ah, he said. So that's why they're here. Huh? That's why who here? Ask Arashi. A strange sound could be heard like electricity. However, it was followed by a roar. Arashi's eyes went wide as he pushed Gato to the side. The man was the one that pained him, having him die would not be good. As he leaped away, the four thugs behind him got burned as the Black Panther tore them apart. Arashi landed. Damn it, he said. What the hell said God to us? He picked himself up on his scrubby legs. Seems we have extra company. The Kumo team landed. Finally you show your ugly face, said Keio. Do you know how long we've been waiting for this? Darue, said Arashi. Arashi, said Darue. I would say it's good to see you, however. 
what you're here to do is not a good thing. Huh. Figure it was sooner or later they send someone after me. But I'm disappointed they send you and these bunch of kids. Kids, say Kale. As he pulled the blade on his back. Once I'm done with you, you won't think of me as much. Kekashi. Kekashi turned towards Zabuza. It seems that we're not enemies anymore. Because there's someone else I'm gonna be chopping to pieces. Gato stepped back. Kill them, he shouted. Kill them all. His man moved forward. Naruto brought his hand together as two clones poof into reality. Two clones grabbed onto Tazuna's hand as he leaped off of the man, getting to a safer distance. He glanced on towards the missing one who was tied up, unable to defend himself. And not to mention the situation has changed. As Naruto looked towards Sire, he then looked towards Sasuke. Well, Tazuna has been protected behind this line, said Naruto as he draw, a line right on the bridge of his feet. Let's let none of them get past, shall we? Let, said Saya. As she pulled out two kunais, Sasuke pulled a scroll as he went through Hansai. His sword appeared. As he placed scroll back away, he unsheathed the thing as he whipped it around. As Naruto raised both of his hands, his skin started to harden as his chakra literally turned into pure rock and thrown both of his fists. Kekashi stood there as he was a defender as well. There was a lot of them, in the hundreds. The few that managed to try and get past Kagashi found themselves being thrown like a rag doll over the edge of the bridge as they hit into the un, feeling water as their body was thrown and knocked, and the pressure killing them. Zabuza hacked through the force, however. Arashi used this as a distraction. He grabbed onto one of the thugs before he strapped the explosive to his back and threw him right into the Kumo team. The man exploded, killing more of his own thugs and also forcing the Kumo team to jump back. A nasty assault as he kept on using them as nothing but meat bags to launch them, killing many of the thugs in the process. As long as Gato was safe, his meal ticket was still safe. For now, he had to kill these Kumo ninjas. He slammed both of his hands together as he saw the Kumo ninjas in a battle with the thugs. He smirked at that. He started to generate an obscene amount of lightning down towards his fingers. A technique that was famous not only by the third Raikage, however, he did not possess the raw talent and not to mention the ingenuity that the third Raikage possessed to pull it off completely. However, with the right amount of lightning and the force, he could shred through them like butter. He shot forward as he tore through two of his tugs. However, Darui was close to the second one. The man nicked Darui across the chest, however, the man bent his back as Darui head touched the ground. As he had to bend far back so he wouldn't be torn in half. Darui tried to sweep away his leg with his own. However, Arshi jumped before he twisted his hand and brought his hand down towards Darui's face. However, Arshi had to look up as he saw a sword being aimed at his face. Damn brat, he shouted. He brought his hand up in a cutting motion as he cut right through Kale's blade with a charging of lightning. Kale twists as he brought his blade down but Arashi plunged his hand into his shoulder. Kale screamed out. Samui sliced Arashi across the other shoulder. Damn it, he cursed as he just landed on his back. She proceeded to slam an elbow in his back, forcing him down however the man was naturally strong as he got back to his feet. Shrugging her off as she slashed at him, causing him to bleed rather badly. Dory got back to his feet as he delivered a super combo one to the chest, one to the stomach, and then one to the chin. The man staggered back as Samui threw a kunai that lodged into his shoulder, forcing him to step back. Yujito then jumped as she spin and slam, a kick in his face, causing him to stagger once again. Kyo then launched two kunai as they pinned him right in the chest. Not in his heart, but enough to make him drop to one knee. Damn it, he said, as he was bleeding rather badly from all the slashes and cuts. The reason why Arashi was the at missing in was because of what he had in his possession. The secrets of several of the third Raikage techniques, which he tried to bastardize, but he could never fully accomplish any of them. Back towards the other side as Naruto Kakashi and Saya and Sasuke stood there. As he had dealt with the bandits, they were close enough to see all the action and what was going on. 
Arashi forcefully got back to his feet when he heard a scream. He glanced behind him as he saw Gato got his head completely sliced off by the missing ninja Buzza. He's screaming frustration, no! Yujito came at him as he leaped over her and he landed right in the center. However, he was now cut off by the Kanoa ninjas. Arashi frowned in rage. Damn it, damn it, damn it, he cursed to himself. It's over, Arashi, said Darui. You're coming back to Kumo with us. After all, he still had the scroll in his possession. It was either they brought him back and torture the information out of him or they kill him and let that scroll die with him. But they wouldn't allow it to fall in anyone else's hands. Arashi knew what he was in for if he went back to Kumo. They would torture him just for stealing scroll and not to mention, they would make it more painful for deserting the village. Kumo did not take lightly to traitors. The Raikai did not like that at all. And he was not going back there and now that his meal ticket was dead. Damn it, he had no choice. A smirk came on his face as Naruto noticed that. Arashi gave Naruto a smile. As Naruto could feel it. He could feel the concentration of electricity gathering. It was rushing towards the man's chest. As Naruto then realized what he was about to do. Run! He shouted! Kegashi looked down towards him. However, electricity started to shoot out of Arashi's body. Too late! He yelled. Naruto's eyes went wide as he turned towards Sasuke and Saya and Kegashi. Arashi's body already started to lose its color. As his entire body was just giving off a faint light. Time seemed to slow down for everyone as Kegashi reached out to grab Naruto. However, time seemed to just pause. As Naruto stood there, Electricity shoot into his brain, giving him a sense of, well, super thinking. This is bad, said Naruto. You got yourself in a rather sticky situation here, said Grandma. If you hit him with that wind chakra gathering your fingertips right now, the elements will just mix together and cause. A chain reaction will be probably worse for your team. And you have no time to switch to another element. He's already gonna blow. Yeah, said Naruto as he felt. The electricity start to affect his skin. He was probably the only one that can come out of this alive. As his eyes looked towards Saya, Sasuke, and Kakashi, his team, he looked toward his brother Sasuke. Damn it. He had to do something. He couldn't just let them die. Naruto ain't our here turned white. As he triggers something he's never triggered before, his entire body is charging with the wind inside of him. He felt everything around him just so calm. As he moved, Kakashi's eyes went wide, Sasuke's eyes went wide. As Naruto held out his hand, his entire body seemed to be transparent. The Kumo ninjas tried to flee, however, Arashi released it. Boom! The explosion went off. All of that gathered up chakra would have completely destroyed the bridge and killed them in the process. As it was a fail safe technique. A ultimate sacrifice. However, to their shock, all of the lightning was contained and it was shot down into the water. The surge of lightning literally split the water. Just going out to show how much Power was packed into that technique, showing the bottom of the ocean right there. When all of the smoke cleared away, there was nothing there. Sasuke looked around confused. Where's Naruto? He said. As he stopped shielding his face, Kakashi's eyes went wide. A Sharingan was able to see what happened until the last moment Naruto had jumped. And somehow his body was so see-through, so transparent, Kakashi could literally see through him. Kakashi had no idea what Naruto did, however. Somehow they were all still alive. That guy was making a suicide move. The amount of lightning that charged right up into his heart went off as a sizable explosion that would have leveled the entire bridge. That was probably a Kinjutsu. Probably why they were hunting after him. A sacrificing technique. Where's Naruto Sasuke said, snapping Kakashi from his musings. As Kakashi realized, 
What just happened? There was no body. Nothing was thrown into the water. He was vaporized. Saya's eyes went wide. Saya was an emotionless tool like the other wood agents. Her father would never allow that to happen to her. She had emotions. While she was given the mission to watch over these two boys, slowly but surely they became friends. Dante would never put his daughter into the root program. Reason being, he wanted her to take over for him. While he taught her how to conceal her emotions and lock them off, he wanted her to have a mind because tools could not rule the operation. Once he passed on, she was going to be the one to take over the root agents. So she had emotions to speak of. Kyo eyes went wide in shock. They were warned about that technique. A technique created by the Third Raikage. Concerning the man stick around for three days of fight until his people got away. A technique he used to protect his people at all costs. Given his life in the process. Using all of the body's chakra with lightning nature to create a surge. That could annihilate a small village. We're alive. Said Kyo still shot that he survived that. He, he jumped in the way, said Aurora. Samoa and Yujita were confused, not really understanding. What were their sensei talking about? What are you talking about, sensei, said Kyo. His students did not see their eyes. Were not fast enough, but whatever that kid did, he became so translucent, he was able to use wind chakra to fund the light in the way. He funneled it into the water. As he glanced towards the ocean as he saw, the water just refilling. Sasuke stood by the edge of the bridge. Kakashi, where did Naruto go? He said. Did he jump off or something? It's in the water. Sasuke, Saya said. He's... No. Don't you dare, Sasuke said to her. Rage in his eyes. The glare that he gave her was one of pure death and rage in Sharingan. Showing that he was about to murder someone. As Zabuza stood there as well. The situation feeling rather awkward. He can't be dead, Sasuke said to himself. Of course Naruto can't be dead. Naruto was his best friend, no he was his brother. The person that helped him through so much difficult things in his life. The person that actually made him want to... Well, look forward towards the future. Or rebuilding his clan. Having a happy life. Actually falling in love with some girl out there for him. Even though they always complain about him being a brute. That it would be really hard for a girl to love him. No. He just... He can't be dead. Sasuke refused to believe that. He wouldn't be dead. Naruto was... No. Sasuke leaped off. Kakashi caught him and pulled him back. Sasuke stop. He said. He's gone. No. Sasuke said. Let go of me. As he started to rile up. But Kakashi gripped onto him tightly. Say it. Say let go of me. He glared in Kakashi's eyes. And Kakashi saw it. The rage, the twisting, the emotion, Sasuke's eyes start to change as they morph into something else. As Sasuke starts to get stronger as he struggle against, Kakashi was holding on to him. Saya chopped him in the back of the neck as he fell unconscious. As Kakashi looked towards her, we can talk about this later, she said. As Kakashi knew that she was right. There is no way that Naruto would have survived, being hit directly by the attack. Somehow he was able to use his body as a funnel. And not to mention they could not sense his chakra at all. And Naruto was literally a beacon of chakra with the amount of chakra he possessed. He was truly gone. As the Kumo team decided to get out of there, their mission was complete. But still, they were still confused what the hell just happened. Dory decided to tell them. On the way back home, Zobuzo did not really have anything to say cut, Haku binds and picked him up and made his way. As the team made their way towards the end of the bridge, Kakashi, holding the unconscious Sasuke, as Saya glanced back over towards the end of the destroyed bridge, she couldn't believe that he was truly gone. Meanwhile, Kakashi was right. Naruto body became so translucent that he could see through him because Naruto did not reach anywhere near to the peak of his power. Not even close. To generate the elements. To literally cause this entire world, even the Shinigami. 
was worried about what would happen in the future regarding his child. However, for that brief second, the urge to protect these people caused him to tap into his power that he had hidden under the surface. And thus, the moment he made contact with that light in his body, the wind that generated from his body literally dispersed, thus dispersing him in the process. However, his shocker brought him back together like a tail beast. The wind reforming as Naruto found himself in the depths of the ocean unconscious. The water around him seemed to have a mind of its own as it literally keep him up above. His head turned towards the sky. However, something flew down. As this thing had sharp claws, it reached as it hooked onto his clothing and pulled him out of the water. Several water whips came out as he grabbed out Naruto's legs. The water was trying to protect him. The thing glanced down. As his wings were flapping, he didn't have time for this. It opened its mouth. Hot, scrolling red flames came out and turned the water into mist before it took Naruto and flew off. But guys, me instance right here. If you want to see this person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as you posted. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Peace.